For Krima Media's policy, I'm Sane Jamini. Joining me today to unpack the IFP manifesto is the IFP leader, Velengo Sini Shabisa. Mr. Shabisa, your party boasts that where it governs, there is a seven leadership, accountability, and that we are also a responsive governance. Why is that important? First of all, let me thank this opportunity to convey our views as the IFP to the people of South Africa as they will be going to the voting stations on the 1st of November. Can I begin by saying the IFP is a liberation organization that was not formed after 1994 when people of South Africa have got freedom. But we come back prior the liberation of our people. When the IFP was formed in 1975, the main objective was to liberate our people from oppression and dispossession and to protect the vulnerable, which is women and children. This is the mission which we are still pursuing even today because it is true. We are free with an equal right to vote, all of us, black, white, Indian, or colored, but we are not yet equal in terms of the social and economic status. Some are rich and some are very poor, which is the majority. Now, the IFP, as we are approaching the 2021 local government election, the local government election is about the people where they live. The manifesto should be talking to what they experience on a daily basis. It's unlike the national and provincial election because some of the issues does not touch them on a daily basis, but the local government election, we talk of the basics, water, electricity, roads, what touches people on a daily basis. That is why, therefore, we present the 10-point plans to the voters of South Africa, wherever they are. The first thing, wherever we govern as the IFP, we make things happen. We have a track record. You can trace us before 1994, because for your information and reminder, the IFP was responsible to govern the erstwhile Wazulu government, which was not able to understand because Prince Mangusutu Telezi refused to take independence of Wazulu. So the Wazulu government remained part of South Africa. During that period, we built schools, clinics, hospitals, police stations, colleges of education. We even built the learning institution, Mangosutu University of Technology. We even built, founded the Itala Bank, which was intended to finance black people in as far as the economy was concerned. After 1994, the IFP was in charge of the province of Wazul Natal for 10 years. We continued to build schools, clinics, and in terms of the local government, the IFP from 1995 was in charge of many municipalities where you can trace our record in Wazul Natal, district municipalities where we provided water to our people. Local municipalities, even today, we still provide housing, water, electricity. We ensure the economic development of the local people because we prioritize the local economic development. That is why we say we have a record where you can trace our performance as the IFP, that whenever we are given an opportunity, 
we make things happen. You said the governing party must address the issue of gender-based violence with agency that it deserves because it is like a pandemic. What will then your party do differently in, att- in addressing this issue, Mr. Shabisa? We must agree that some of the issues that affect our people are not the competence of the local government, but the competence of the provincial and national government. What the IFP is suggesting to our government is that they must put more money to local municipalities because that is where people live. That is where gender-based violence takes place every minute. That is where people are. The unfortunate thing, the lot of resources are held at a national government. The centers that should protect women and children who are victims of gender-based violence, money must be revolved down to local municipalities so that the local municipalities become responsible. If the government can give more money to local municipalities, we will become champions in the protection of women and children by ensuring that protection centers with enough material are available at all local level to ensure that the protection of women and children is given a priority. And you are also highlighting that you will work closely with uh, the traditional leaders so that they can execute and ensure that community needs are met. But how are you planning to serve now, Mr. Shabisa, in urban areas and townships where we know that there are no traditional leaders? Who are you going to work with in in those communities to make sure that uh, service deliveries reach the people where they are? That is why we separated that when it comes to the issue of traditional leaders, that is only applicable in rural areas, in urban areas. Our councillors, what committees will be the champions of seeing to it that the development of our people, the needs of our people are taken as a priority through the councillor make the councillor accountable and if need be make deputations to meet the mayor so that the priority of the people in the urban areas will be taken into account and in the rural areas we will ensure that the traditional leaders are part and parcel of working together with the local municipalities because the traditional leaders live with the people and they play a critical role in ensuring stability, peace in the areas which they are responsible as the traditional leaders. How is the IFP planning to tackle the issue of housing? It is very unfortunate that after so many years, when we have achieved our freedom, the majority of the population, which is black people, in the informal settlement, they live a life which no one desires. When you visit them, you really feel that justice has not been done to the voters who are the majority in South Africa. The unfortunate part, it is not that South Africa does not have money. A lot of money is being misused. The revelations of the Zondo Commission tells us where the money that should be creating job opportunities, building houses, supplying water to our people and providing electricity goes to. The government of South Africa is able to mobilize billions of money as we saw during the pandemic last year. The IFP in every municipality at a local level We are champions of providing housing to our people. And the houses that we provide 
are of good quality. I can mention them. You can go to Big Five Chavisa, go to Chozini, go to Nongoma, Ulundi, Nganda, Ngutu. I can mention them like a song. In all these municipalities, one of the achievements that we have managed to do is to provide quality and dignified housing. We ensure that every money that is received by the local government goes to the needs of the people in the Zululand district and Umzinyati, whose competence is water service delivery. Although we have not yet connected everybody to a running water, but we are very happy that in areas where we are not yet able to connect people in a running water system. We have a program which has a timetable through water tankers, where we provide people with water and the citizens of these municipalities, they know that our turn is on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So now when it is their turn, they harvest more water until the next turn. This compensate the fact that we have not connected them, but they do have water to use on a daily basis. This is the record that you can trace where we govern, which we say to the voters, we don't want to promise something that we have not done. We promise what we are doing, and we are saying we will continue with our track record. Mm. And you also promised to prioritize uh, early childhood development centers and sports fields to give uh, youth real hope for the future. Why do you think this is important, Mr. Shabisa? The IFP believes in building the next generation. Prince Mangusu Tupteleze taught us a slogan, education for liberation when others were saying liberation first and education later. Education in the IFP is a priority for the nation. The early childhood centers are a foundation. If you lay a proper foundation even for a house, you are likely to have a strong house. But if you lay a poor foundation in the education system, you are likely to have a generation that will be educated but with poor foundation and could not sustain the challenges. That is why we prioritize early childhood centers. We build crashes for learners and also we provide bursaries to learners who has completed their metric to university level and in some of our municipalities, like Enkandla and Engotu, we even send students abroad to do specialized jobs, which will be of great help when they come back after the completion of their studies in South Africa. And we can't ignore the issue of corruption, Mr. Shabisa. What is the IFP's plan in dealing with corruption at the local government level? And what do you think should be done uh, to the corrupt officials? It is true, corruption has robbed the people of South Africa a great deal of development. As I said earlier, if you listen at the Zondo Commission, you can imagine if that money was used to build houses, provide jobs, as many graduates are sitting at home, connect electricity, connect water to our people, deal with informal settlement. Our people will be a great nation with no shame as we see today. What the IFP proposes is that the first people who must take an initiative are the voters. The voters must vote a party of integrity a party that has a record of corruption. What is the use of voting that party? Because you are extending the corruption which you hear at Zondo Commission. 
if you go back premiers of Wazuru Natal in 20 from 1994 the IFP had three premiers Dr Ngubane Dr Mchali and Dr Mdalose none of them have ever been charged with a criminal case of corruption none amongst members of the provincial legislature and national assembly of the IFP is up and down in court on a case of corruption. None amongst the mayors of the IFP who has been charged with corruption and up and down in the court of law. But it is true with the ruling party. It is a known fact that they are leaders of the ruling party who are up and down in court on cases of corruption. That is why we are saying the people of South Africa must liberate themselves by voting a party of integrity, a party that does not have a track record of corrupt cases up and down in court, explaining and defending how they misused the money of the people. And if we were a government, this is what we were going to do. We will arrest everyone who is clearly implicated in the Zondo Commission. Because the longer we wait, by the time when you start to follow those people, you will not be able to recover anything because they will have removed everything from their name and put it with their other relatives and you can't recover anything. Now, the government should as quickly as now arrest the people implicated in the Zondo Commission, confiscate what they, they got or achieved through fraud and corruption, and ensure that the cases of corruption are dedicated to special courts so that a case does not take three years or four years and evidence get lost, witnesses die, and eventually a corrupt person run away. It has taken too long. Witnesses are no longer there. The magistrate cannot prosecute a person and you can't recover anything. If there are dedicated courts for corruption cases, for gender-based violence, and the case is tried within a short space of time, and you, if you find a person guilty, you sentence that person to a severe sentence so that you send a message even to other people that crime corruption violence does not pay but what mm -hmm. happens in our country is a joke some of the cases you even lose interest of following them because they take too long before they come into an end and no message is sent and there is no blacklisting of people implicated in corruption either service providers because if you are quick and swift, quickly you will blacklist a service provider who benefited unfairly and confiscate what he or she benefited in a bad way so that even other service providers will know that mm -hmm. they dare not enter into corrupt activities with the government because you will meet a severe sentence. What would you say now to the voters at home who are a bit hesitant uh, about voting? What I will say to the people of South Africa is that we are a resilient nation. We conquer every challenge that comes before us. I know our people have protested enough, blocking roads, burning tires, complaining of poor service delivery. If you don't go and vote, you allow the person you have been protesting against to continue, remain in power, and not give you service delivery. The only protest that is viable now is that on the 1st of November, all people of South Africa who are not happy of service delivery where they live, they must go to the voting station 
and protest through the ballot box by voting out a government that has failed them and vote in the IFP because we were simple. We promised 10 things. We will be accounting every year of the progress we have done on the 10 point plan. And those people who are living in the municipalities where we govern, they must go in numbers to the voting station to give us more power so that we carry on with the projects that we have started to ensure that services reach them during their lifetime. If you don't go to vote, you allow a government that has failed you to continue fail you. But if you want to change things, you want to see development now, go to the voting station, vote out the government that has failed you and vote in the IFP. We make a pledge that we will deliver. We are not promising what we are unable to do. We promise what we are champions of doing. It is our philosophy. We do not promise what we can't do. We only promise what we will keep. And we are known that whenever we make a promise, we keep the promise. That was IFP leader Velungo Sinishabisa talking to Polity about the IFP manifesto.